What's up guys? Uh, we're just on our way to uh, YouTube Good. space in St Pancras in London. Uh, we've been invited to go up to the unveiling of uh, some sort of VR experience of the HMS Cavalier. I think that's right. Uh, it's an old destroyer that's at Chatham Dockyard. We've been invited along by Wargaming. Uh, I'm going to check it out. It's going to get touched up basically by people in a room. We're going to get touched up by people, I'm gonna wearing, start touching people up. wearing headsets. Oh. It's going to be great. It's going to be sweaty. It's going to be a good time. He's hyped. Need to there we go. Somebody from the Google Arts and Culture. And Hi and welcome to the Frankfurt Studios YouTube studios here in the very heart of London. Uh, apologies for the, uh, the technical error at the moment, we'll blame something later on. Um, we're here today, Wargaming.net, to launch our very latest VR experience um, in conjunction with Google Arts and Cultures. Um, I will introduce the panel in a moment, but just to tell us a bit more about Google Arts and Cultures, I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Tracy Spate, and Tracy is the Director of Special Projects for Wargaming.net. Hi everybody. So, Google Arts and Culture is a platform that allows you to basically see uh, the collections of museums from anywhere in the world. It uses street view technology, still images, uh, VR 360, basically to democratize access to art and culture. So you can download the app at the App Store, it's uh, just called Google Arts and Culture, and look for the HMS um, Cavalier Experience, and you can see what we're talking about today. Awesome, right, so let's introduce the panel and get things started. Um, I'm Richard Cutland, I'm the Head of Military Relations for Wargaming Europe. Uh, we're joined today by some incredibly special guests, so I'll allow them to introduce themselves. First of all, Richard. Hi, I'm Richard Hilsworth, I'm Director of Preservation and Education at the Historic Dockyard Chatham, which is where HMS Cavalier is preserved. And a man that probably needs no introduction. Hey, I'm Dan Snow, and I worked with these guys trying to make this awesome AR, VR experience of the last surviving destroyer from Britain's Royal Navy in World War II. Welcome to HMS Cavalier, one of the last surviving British World War II destroyers. I'm Dan Snow. I'm Richard Cutman from World of Warships. HMS Cavalier was once named the fastest ship in the fleet. That's right, and she's had a storied career, from the frigid Arctic of the Mamansk Run to the steamy seas of the Far East. OK, here we go, Richard, down in the very bottom of the ship here, the engine room. This is where the action happens. Steam created there, drives the turbines, drives the propellers, pushing this mighty two and a half thousand ton vessel across the surface of the waves. And she was a fast old vessel down as well, wasn't she? Capable of excess 33 knots, which is going some for any ship. Yeah, but the guys down here, I mean, they, they, they created that speed. They made that happen, but it was a dangerous job. They're behind watertight compartments. They're right down. Look at these ladders, very narrow, confined spaces. You're not getting out. If a torpedo comes to the side or a bomb comes to the deck, you're going to struggle to escape. And, and lots of these stokers down here paid the ultimate price. Look at HMS Keith in 1940 off Dunkirk. A uh, bomb came down the smokestack, blew up in the engine room, ship broke apart, and, and there were heavy casualties. Like you say, they were called stokers down here, and I found that quite odd, because in my mind, stokers were the guys that were shoveling coal into a furnace. But of course, down here, it was all about oil and steam. So it was, there's the steam, there's the boilers, come and steam comes out there. You measure your steam and your, your temperature, and your pressure on these dials. I love these dials, they're so resonant of World War II, they're great. This is interesting up here, isn't it? Because Samuel White and company, uh, cows in the Isle of Wight, IFW, that's where the ship was built in 1944. And that's weird for, uh, for the modern standpoint, because nowadays cows is a little sort of seaside town, and uh, the idea they're making major naval assets, well, that really shows the extent to which the country was having to mobilize, and, and every town, every port was playing its part. Well, here we are on the squid deck. Uh, there are two, two mountings um, of three barrels each. They fire six bombs over the front of the ship. They're fired from the Taz room, uh, Asdik's room up in the uh, ops room. Yep, yep. And um, they land in a, just ahead of the ship, probably a quarter of a mile, half a mile. Uh, they land in a diamond pattern and at different depths. 
So they've surrounded the submarine, as it were, and couldn't uh, crush it. Uh, that, that's the theory, anyway. I find it quite amazing that you say they were fired <laughs> over the ship. I mean. Well, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't unusual for if they had a, a weak charge for one of the bombs to drop near the ship, uh, just just ahead of the ship, which was very, yeah, it was quite a, a bit of a worry sometimes. <laughs> but, <laughs> I, I don't think we actually, actually had any hit the ship, luckily. Did you have a nice little time watching no. the virtual reality experience? Yeah, it was great. It was cool. Yeah, so we watched, uh, they unveiled a nice little thing. We had uh, Dan Snow in, who's a, a, a famous historian from off the telly and that. Dan Snow. Dan Snow, he knows, in fact, knows quite a lot. So uh, the quote is entirely wrong. There was another guy, <laughs> speaking of Game of Thrones, uh, there was a guy from Chatham Historical Dockyard, um, <laughs> who, who, yeah, no, who's a very cool, interesting dude. Great dude. Um, and Richard Cullen presented it, and another chap from Wargaming, I forgot the name. But it was really super interesting. Um, it's cool. Hopefully, we've got some footage that we've been able to like stitch into this video to make it much more interesting than just me talking at camera for a minute. Um, but yeah, it's been a nice day out. We're, uh, we've got a free beer now, which is pretty sweet for four in the afternoon on a Monday. <laughs> so pretty pleased with that. Uh, you know, this is the glamorous life where we now leave. The YouTube space, pretty cool. Check out the little woodlands. And there's yeah, got a lovely little little woodland area. You know, because uh, I'm gonna be taking some of that home. Because YouTube, they got a big wall of like vloggers up there. Lots of famous people on it. We're probably on it somewhere. Yeah, okay. we're, no, I haven't looked too hard, but I think we're, so, we're, we're probably up we're, there. We've been told that. I think it's most, mostly is down. <laughs> <laughs>